Now, I'm not saying it's the best in the world, but I am pretty sure you're going to want more than one slice of Walter's Killer Meatloaf. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. If this is your first time tuning in, let us know you're out there by giving us a big thumbs up below and then hit that subscribe button to make sure you never miss a video. Now, let's start cooking. One of the things that makes this meatloaf a killer meatloaf, I believe, is the fact that we actually parb cook our vegetables before we put them in the meatloaf. Most meatloaf recipes that I've seen, you put everything in the meatloaf raw in, into, the, into the, the ground beef raw. Um, and so the difference that we do here is that we are going to basically sweat our vegetables and then we'll take them out, let them cool down a little bit, and then we'll mix them into our ground beef. So let's take a look at our ingredients. Of course, we've got our ground beef here. In this, in this case, I've got about three pounds of fresh ground beef and um, our vegetables are gonna be onions and then three different bell peppers. I've got yellow, red, and green bell peppers and a little bit of celery. And so basically this is our mirepoix with the exception of carrots. I don't like to put carrots in the meatloaf because it's really not the texture that we're, that we're going for. So those are gonna be our vegetables and then once those are sweated, we will then add our garlic Remember, we don't put garlic in with everything else because garlic cooks quicker than everything else does and it might, uh, it tends to burn. So that's really going to be our, our method for that. We'll sweat our vegetables, take them out, let them rest for a little bit. Then we'll put our meat in and then we'll add our seasonings. And in this case, I've just done a little Italian seasoning mix of some thyme, some parsley, some basil, just some dried herbs is what that is and with you know some basic salt and pepper and then we've got a little bit of brown sugar and if you're trying to avoid sugar you can certainly do that but just a little bit of brown sugar about a quarter cup um, makes a big difference because there is going to be tomato sauce in the mix and what brown sugar does is it helps to um, avert the the sharpness and the acidity of of tomatoes so that'll be part of our our mix and then we'll bind everything together with uh, a beaten egg and then we've also got uh, a little bit of soy sauce a lot of times I'll put Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce in uh, meatloaf but if you're trying to avoid gluten like we do in my family um, we I'm using a gluten-free soy sauce and I've also used uh, I've made uh, some some breadcrumbs here and you can buy Italian breadcrumbs but it's just as easy to make your own and so what I've done is used a little bit of gluten-free just regular gluten-free sandwich bread and I have whizzed that in a blender with uh, some again some of the Italian herbs some of the basil oregano and thyme and that'll be our mix for our meatloaf and then we'll make a little sauce and that is it's, it's actually i say it's a little sauce it's an exceptional sauce we use the plain tomato sauce and then to that we're going to add a little bit of smoked paprika and a little bit of ma uh, maple syrup and uh, some uh, ground black pepper and that'll be it so let's get going to get started with our recipe we're just going to add a little bit of oil to our uh, I've got a cast iron skillet here that we're going to use to sweat our vegetables. So we've just got a lot, I've just put a little bit of grapeseed oil in there. Just uh, a neutral oil is fine. Any neutral oil, avocado oil, grapeseed oil is fine. And we'll add our onions. Looks like I got a little crossover some of my peppers, but that's okay. That's just more flavor. We'll add our onions and our peppers and our celery. And I know it looks like a lot of vegetables, but they will definitely cook down. And boy, they just are going to have such good flavor for this meatloaf. We'll let those get cooking. And let's add a little bit of salt, like we always do when we sweat vegetables. And what the salt does is, of course, helps to pre-season, but it also helps to bring, get some of the moisture out of the vegetables. So while those are sweating, 
we've gone ahead and we've turned, we've preheated our oven and I think we need to preheat that to about 450 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 230 centigrade. So we'll go ahead and we've got our oven preheating because when we put this meatloaf in the oven, we want it to get going straight away. We don't want it to have to sit there and, and uh, come up to temperature. So we want the oven hot. So we'll let those cook for a little bit. And uh, once they're soft and translucent, then we will take them off. Our vegetables have been going now for probably seven minutes here. And they are nice and soft and translucent. And now let's add our garlic. And in this case, you know, it doesn't even, it wouldn't matter if you got a little bit of color on these vegetables, started caramelizing them just a little bit because they're going to be, of course, inside a meat dish. And all that does is going to create a little bit more sweetness and flavor in them. So we'll, uh, we'll cook them for about three or four more minutes, let the garlic get nice and cooked and the vegetables will be nice and sweated and maybe even a little caramelization on them and then we will finish our mix. All right, I think that's gonna be it for our vegetables. So now we can just transfer those to our bowl. So we'll just transfer all these vegetables to our, this is gonna be our mixing bowl and we're just gonna let the vegetables cool down a little bit. In fact, I'm just gonna pull them off the heat Transfer them over. While our vegetables are cooling down, let's go ahead and start on our sauce. So I'm just going to, we're gonna need probably, I don't know, a third of this sauce to go into our, our meatloaf. And the rest of it we'll reserve for our uh, sauce, for, for, the, for our topping sauce. So what we'll do is I've got that tomato sauce in our pot here. We're just gonna heat this up, bring it to a boil and season it. And then we'll add our, our, our uh, maple syrup and then we will let it continue to simmer and reduce. And that will be our topping sauce. And it's just, it's almost like making ketchup or almost like making barbecue sauce. And uh, you know, of course you could amend this any way you want. You could put mustard in it. Uh, you know, you could put fennel in it. You could do all kinds of things with it, but I just, I'm just keeping it simple because we have a lot of things going on in our, in our meatloaf. So, um, that, that's what we'll do with this sauce. It's the fun time now while our sauce is coming up to uh, temperature. Let's go ahead and mix our meatloaf. So again, we've got about three pounds of meat here and we're just going to place it all in our bowl with our vegetables, which have been cooling down. And I just want to get those mixed around just a little bit and really we'll be doing this with with our hands here in a second I just want to keep them keep them dry for a minute until we get the rest of our mixture in here all right so we've got our uh, meat and our vegetables in here I'm just going to go ahead and season them with our seasoning mix and a little bit of brown sugar and I'm not even going to use all the brown sugar. You just, you, you'll, you'll, you know, you can, you, you can use your own discretion uh, because again, the brown sugar is really not for sweetness. It's really more as a way to counteract the acidity of the, of the tomato sauce. So there's our brown sugar. And now let's go ahead and put our tomato sauce in. Because again, we do want this to be nice and tomato-y. Ooh, it's starting to smell like meatloaf. Okay, get that pretty much mixed in. And now I've got a, probably a lot more breadcrumbs here than I need. So I'm only gonna put about maybe half, half of these breadcrumbs in here. A little bit more. There we go. And there's our breadcrumbs. And again, what the breadcrumbs and the eggs do is just act as a binder so that 
the whole mixture doesn't just, just fall apart. I've got more, I think I've got about an egg and a half here, so we'll put about that much. We don't need a lot of egg. And there's our mixture. And ground beef, as you probably know, can take quite a bit of salt. So we'll start, you know, we can always add a little bit of salt at the, uh, you know, up on service, but I'm probably starting with about, I don't know, two tablespoons of salt in this. And I do like a bit of pepper. So don't, do not neglect this part. Don't neglect putting your seasoning in to your your meatloaf because once it's seasoned once it's cooked of course you know you can only season it on the surface and now we'll just add a few drops of our soy sauce which again soy can be a little bit salty unless you use the the, the low sodium version which we do in uh, in our case we're using a gluten-free uh, and low sodium version of soy sauce as well as gluten-free breadcrumbs so that's our mix, and now I'm just going to actually, yeah, we'll put a little bit more in there, and we'll just put the rest of that in our pan. And let's finish getting our mixed around, and then we'll form our loaves. Okay, we've got our meatloaf seasoned, we've got everything in there. And now this is the part where you can, uh, you can, you can have fun, get the kids in on it. Um, but also, you know, we, I've got my list of seasonings in the recipe, but you could also add, you know, if you wanted a little bit of a spicier one, you could certainly add some red pepper flakes or whatever else like that that you would like to have in, in your meatloaf. So that is our, our mix. And what I'm going to do is I'm just, I'm going to do two loaves rather than doing one big fat loaf. We're going to do two medium loaves of this meatloaf. So there's one, and I like to just form it on, uh, and for this, of course, I like using a silicone or silicon cutting board, just so you're not getting meat juices in the crevices of your your wooden one. And I do like for the the loaf to be a nice fairly tall loaf. And uh, we hopefully these will be about the same size. I guess I could turn that other one out and just to make sure that we're close. But we'll just go ahead and put one on our loaf pan. And let's turn the next one out. And hopefully I haven't underestimated my sizes too badly. And we've got consistency in our, in our loaf sizes. So, looks like that one's a little bit bigger than the first one. And so we'll just continue patting it and forming it on the pan. Okay. So there's loaf number two. And there you have it. And these are ready to go in the oven. Okay, here's our two loaves. As you can see, one is clearly bigger than the other one. I could 
take them out, remix it, start again, but I think we'll be fine. So we'll go into the oven with those. And I'm gonna start in about the middle of the oven because we wanna get them, again, the oven right now is on uh, about 220 uh, centigrade, 450 Fahrenheit, or 230 centigrade, 450 Fahrenheit, because we want to go ahead and form a, not really a crust because it's not gonna actually make a crust, but it's gonna form a little bit of a, a barrier on the outside and then we'll turn, turn the oven down to cook it on the inside. Okay, on to our sauce. As you can see, our sauce has come up to temperature and it's starting to boil a little bit, so that's what we want. And now I'm just going to season it a little bit with a little bit of smoked paprika. That nice smoky flavor. And probably should have done this before I did the paprika, but a little bit of salt. Some black pepper. And by the way, when you're doing your meatloaf, if you want to do two loaves like I did, you could certainly have a, a bowl sitting on your scale. You could weigh your, your total amount, and then you could put an empty bowl on the scale and, and do it half and half. That way you are assured of your, your pieces being about the same size. So now we've got our sauce here. And just bring it up. And of course it's, you know, this sauce is, is it's, it's already a decent sauce, but it, again, it's just straight with straight tomato sauce. Hey everybody, it's Walter from Artistic Gourmet Adventures. My wife Kim and I own this unique small group tour company where we host groups of six to 12 guests for one week luxury adventures in beautiful locations throughout Europe and the United States. I have the privilege of being the adventure chef, creating and preparing daily gourmet meals for our guests. So in this video series from our cozy home kitchen here in the beautiful Loire Valley of France, we will demonstrate a wide variety of recipes from culinary classics to originals, as well as covering professional kitchen techniques for the home chef. For more information on Artistic Gourmet Adventures, check our website, linked in the description below. Okay, and then just our, our maple syrup. And, you know, I've got quantities listed in the recipe, but again, you'll, you'll just need to do this and, and, and use your own judgment to, for, for your taste, you know, so let's give it a taste. Ah, it's fantastic. It's really good. Now, I think it can use a little bit more maple syrup because I do like a little bit of that sweetening um, for, the, for the final sauce. So we'll put a little bit more maple syrup in. Other than that, the smoked paprika comes through. The salt has helped to calm down the, the acid and the tintiness of it. And now all we need to do is just let that simmer to um, give us a little bit thicker uh, consistency. And that'll be what we will actually put some of this over our meatloaf while we're cooking. And then we'll just use the rest of it as our sauce at the end. Okay, so checking on our meatloaf again, I have, uh, we've basted it a couple of different times. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna baste it this may be our final time because they, they seem pretty firm. And now just to look at the hat, look at the nice, the way the sauce and the juice from the, from the meatloaf has mixed, it's turned into a really nice, nice sauce. So these actually feel quite firm. So I'm going to go ahead and put the temperature probe in, but you can, I can, you can pretty much rest assured these are done because they, there's not really that much give in them, but if you want to be absolutely sure, you want to make sure that beef is cooked to 160 degrees Fahrenheit when you take them out of the oven. Now we're going to let these rest for five minutes before we actually cut into them. So it needs to be about 160 in the middle or 71 degrees Celsius. So we'll just check on our temperature here and it feels pretty firm all the way through. So let's just see where we are. 
we are there. In fact, we're a little bit over because we want the final temperature to be 165 and we are there. We're at 164 or so. So that one is done and so we know this one is done. Look at the look at the texture there. You know, it's firm but still it has some give to it. All right, very good. So these are ready. We will heat up our sauce a little bit to to serve these and we'll get some plated up. I went ahead and put a little bit of foil just very loosely over the top of our of our meatloaf just so that too much heat doesn't escape. But look at that. It's still nice and hot and uh, we are ready to get this served up. Let's just take a look and see what it looks like on the inside. Here, let's just go with this one. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. All right, let's get it plated up so we can taste it. Let's put the final touches on this meatloaf. Oh my goodness, we are serving these today with some pan roasted Brussels sprouts, which um, you can find the, the video on that right above. Just click on that and you can go to the video for those. And now I'm just finishing this with a little bit of our sauce that we made. And I've chopped up some fresh basil and parsley. And then I've put some, uh, some tomatoes around that I've, <clears throat> literally these are just fresh Roma tomatoes that I've uh, dredged in just, a, I've drizzled a little bit of really good extra virgin olive oil on them and then finished them with a little balsamic vinegar, really good balsamic vinegar. And then we're finishing these with some red devil peppers. And I know the name makes them sound like they're, they're hot. They're not hot, they're just nice and smoky. Just a beautiful, beautiful flavor. And we're gonna pair it with a dry red wine from the Beaujolais region of France. It's a, it's a Gamay and uh, should go very well with the, with the ground beef and uh, the Brussels sprouts. And so this is Walter's Killer Meatloaf. All right, let's give it a taste. I am going to come in right on this side. Hmm. Oh, the fantastic thing about this is that it's not dry at all. You know, sometimes you get meatloaf and <clears throat> unless you have sauce, you just about can't eat it. This seriously is very moist all the way through. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that we sweated those vegetables first. And the flavor is just so delicious all the way through. So, boy, I really, I really hope you'll give this a try. Make that sauce. It's very easy to make, you know, without going out and buying a extra tomato sauce. And um, yes, this is fantastic. And these tomatoes with this for just a little bit of relief from the deep flavor, a little freshness. What I like to do with tomatoes like this is just drizzle them with a little bit of really good olive oil and just a dab of balsamic vinegar and salt and pepper. And that's all you need. And then we'll just wash it down with a beautiful dry red wine. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, give us a thumbs up below and hit that subscribe button, it's free. And ring the bell if you want to be notified as soon as we release a new video. Also, let us know in the comments if you have any special recipe requests. We really appreciate you tuning in. See you next time.